of this summer. So, um, Virginia, Reese, and I just wanted to bring you guys out here a little bit because there's a, there's some differences and some interesting um, things to talk about with the Similkameen Appalachian as opposed to the Okanagan Appalachian, which you guys are spending the majority of your time in. Um, this is a uh, this is a relatively new wine growing region. I say wine growing, not grape growing, because grapes have been grown here since the 60s. Um, and, uh, but it wasn't up until like, a, well, we started making wine here in 2003. And at that time there were three wineries in our valley. But the Appalachian's been around right from the start. It's as old as the Okanagan. Um, it's just that now there's more and more wine coming from here. A lot of the grapes grown here were shipped to wine wineries in the Okanagan and made into wine there. But it's, it's really been getting a bit more of a, a reputation here, you know, because there seems to just be something different about the flavor profile of the wines coming out of here. So, I mean, just I'll give you a little overview of, of sort of how it works. Um, like the Okanagan, a lot of this was glacially formed. So glaciers basically ripped through that way. Um, right down at the far end at the bottom of the mountain is the Similkameen River. And so, so you can imagine sort of the the glacier going through and then eventually melting down so this would have been like a full-on kind of river and then you know coming out of the mountains all this melt and everything coming down through these valleys so a big one right behind us here and then eventually making its way down to the river so a lot of the a lot of the area was one time a riverbed and so like uh, for, I'd say for probably the Hensby, mm -hmm. a lot of it's I think linked to this valley behind us. So you can imagine all the water coming out there, a lot of it creating you know a big river through there. So there's an interesting sort of soil type you get through this area where you get a two, two to five feet of good loamy topsoil, and then underneath it's just river river rocks, almost like Chateauneuf du Pape Galais kind of things mm -hmm. and. And you know, uh, and so that that uh, soil profile kind of goes all the way through the Hensby Vineyard there, Orofino's Vineyard, and then it goes down the bank. There's a little bit of a drop off, and then my place is directly straight down the hill from there too. And it's the same soil type there, and that probably ran right through to the river. So it's kind of an interesting soil. And one of the other things that has happened with that too is uh, there's a lot of uh, calcium carbonate. In the soil as well it's not a limestone subso subsoil but there's limestone parts up in the hills and, and being a weak stone i guess that ends up getting washed down into the, the riverbed so there's a lot of the you know calcium covered stones and things like that so that's one of the key things like people find blind tasting in similkameen wines often is this minerality uh to them right and uh so that's kind of what you know of course a trendy thing these days and so there's been a lot more interest in the grapes here and the vineyards here because of that really sort of stony, uh, stony characteristic you get in, in a lot of the wines. And it's also, I guess, the Similkameen's a bit of an interesting appellation in that it's, it's, it's basically has all the climate conditions from the South Okanagan to north of Kelowna all in one area. So you can imagine, right here is probably the hottest part or one of the equal hottest part with down along this sort of bench in the in Corsten and into the Smilkameen and you get like afternoon sun here till the very end and you know you can kind of imagine how that thing might radiate a bit of heat back out here. Eh? Yeah like I would say that we're probably standing in one of if not the hottest vineyard in Canada. Certainly one of yeah. Yeah. Believe us. Yeah. Believe me. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a, it's a real nice thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then with the slope plus the ash, you can never tell all day. I think it's going to have a And then if, yeah, and if you go down the hill to where I am, we get shaded earlier in the day, so it's a bit more of a moderate climate. And then if you go across that little ridge there, behind there is Kerameas, and there's a lot of vineyards right along the river there and they get very little sun you know in a lot of the season in the summer they get quite good sun but it's a really cool climate there i mean this is cabernet sauvignon and it ripens well down there you can only ripen what like Riesling, pinot noir, pinot noir pinot 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 varieties those kind of things that's a so it's it's very cool down there very hot here and and sort of other parts are somewhere in the middle so it's a when you talk about what is the similkameen and you know what grape variety does well in the similkameen we're always like um well you know it's a yeah which part are we talking about because it can vary 
Thank you so much. So. And there's quite a bit of talk in our region about sub-appellations. And when you talk about sub-appellations here in the Similkameen, there's a number of factors that we would have to consider as to what, how to group ourselves. Do we group ourselves in, in, in sunlight hours? Do we group ourselves in soil type? Uh, temperatures. Temperatures. So it's pretty difficult for us right now to kind of delineate where we would like to be in, say, 20 years. And right now, because we are such a small appellation, sometimes it's better just to kind of stick with what we've got as some milk To get the word out. Yeah, word it's still out. pretty yeah. unknown, uh, yeah. some milk mean. So, yeah, no one's in a big rush yeah. here. So, you know, yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say, I'd love to put Costin on my label. Yeah. But oh, what's that? Trying to figure out where the smoke <laughs> 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 <laughs>